A Stuart Beam Engine Refurbishment Part 10, the final assembly and piping, completing the job. Two days have elapsed since I painted the bases, and the paint is dry and hard enough to work with. I've removed the small pieces of silicone rubber tubing to expose the bolts. So the first job is to mount the water pump, and it's quite simple. That is, until you come to pick up these washers off the bench, it's fairly impossible. So here's a top tip, just wet your finger. You just lick your finger, and then it's really easy to pick up these washers. You can even do this with small nuts as well. So the hard part is picking up the nuts and washers. Here I'm using a small spanner to tighten them up. The next part to be mounted is the burner. This burner just pushes into the hole in the steel plate and it's held from underneath by a 2BA countersunk bolt. The boiler mounts to the steel plate in the same way and that too is held to the main baseboard with two more 2BA countersunk bolts. There's enough room on the base just behind the boiler's burner to mount a small gas tank but I'm not going to do that because I do prefer using a much larger external gas tank. And it's time now to pipe up the pump to the clack valve. I need to run a piece of pipe from these two points. I'm using a piece of 532nd pipe, silver soldered to some union cones, and here I'm tightening the nuts. Rather than use copper piping on the water inlet, I thought it was a simpler idea to make a brass fitting like this. And here I'm just fitting a piece of silicone rubber tubing, and I have plenty of this stuff, I buy it off the internet. One end goes onto the pump, the other end goes into the water container. And now it's time to test the pump. By moving the pump back and forth for quite a long time, I managed to get some water in the boiler. That's the boiler, burner and hand pump part of the job completed. Now moving over to the larger baseboard, I need to fit the main engine and the condenser to this board. So I've put all the bolts in, ready to mount the engine, and the condenser locates perfectly on these four bolts sticking up out of the bed plate. Not forgetting to fit the washers, I'm tightening up the bolts that hold the main components of the engine down to the bed plate. It's quite tricky to get into the bolts in this position with my Barco spanner. And when I rotate the flywheel, all is well. I mounted the condenser to the main bed plate with these nuts and washers, in exactly the same way as I did with the pump on the other bed plate. What I'm doing at the moment is using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to clean out the holes. During soldering the condenser together, some of this solder stuck to the threads. But the tap easily removes the solder, and in this clip I'm sweeping away the residue with a brush. And if the threads in the lower part are contaminated with solder, then the threads in the upper part are also going to be contaminated. So once again, I'm using the tap to remove all this stuff. Before I get lots of messages from viewers saying I've missed a bit of paint, yes, I can see it just as well as you can. It's on the right-hand side of the picture, and I will paint over it very shortly. Now that all the solder has been removed from the lower hole, I can fit the drain tap in position. And in the top hole, I've fitted a steam union, and I'm now screwing a PM Research elbow into the steam union. And this is the start of the exhaust piping from the steam engine to the chimney. Taking a short break from the construction, here are some nice things that I bought recently. Starting with five new centre drills. This is my collection of Barco spanners. This one I bought about 35 years ago. And this one was a present from a viewer. I was really delighted with this. It's a newer version of the same spanner. This is a larger Barco spanner that I bought, and this is an even larger one. This is one of the new type with a rubber handle. And this week, I bought yet another one. Look, my hand is shaking with the excitement. This is another Barco spanner, exactly like the one I already had. Well, that is, until you turn it over. And look, it's very different. The jaws are much thinner. I do appreciate that this is not going to be as strong as the other one, but it will get to places where the other one is too wide to reach. Interlude over, it's back to the job. Here are the two components of this steam plant, the steam engine and the boiler. All I have to do now is pipe them together, starting with the exhaust pipe. It's fairly self-explanatory. I just cut down the original brass tubing that I made, screwed two pieces into one of the PM Research elbows, and now I'm connecting the condenser to the engine using the original flange. This turned out to be a very fiddly job, and you can see here that I'm having to use a spanner, one turn at a time, very tedious. I had to remove some of the valve gear to make it easier, and now I'm putting it back. The first part's done, and it really looks the business. Now I have to connect a piece of pipe from the steam outlet on the condenser to the steam inlet on the chimney on the boiler. And to do this, I'm going to use two pieces of copper pipe. This one is a quarter of an inch in diameter, and it has a 3 sixteenths hole in the middle. So I use a piece of steel in the end of the pipe to support it while I thread it. And here's the completed piece of pipe. 
I drilled out a commercial union to quarter of an inch in diameter, and I've silver soldered that to the end of the copper pipe, including the nut. The other piece of pipe that connects to the chimney has to be thinner. This is three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. This is a test fit to find out if it's long enough, and yes it is, so silver solder some unions on the end of it, not forgetting to fit both of the union nuts before silver soldering the cones on the end of the pipe. Because this steam pipe is in close proximity to the hand pump, I'm going to clad this in some string so that I don't burn my fingers when I'm moving the lever like this. I'm not going to fit a drain pipe like I normally do to the tap from the condenser. Instead, I turned up a very simple adapter from a piece of brass hexagon, and here I'm fitting it to the tap, and all I have to do then is use some silicone rubber pipe pushed onto the end of this adapter to drain the condensate into a suitable receptacle. And the last thing I did was connect up a steam pipe from the outlet of the superheater at the base of the chimney to the engine's steam inlet by the displacement lubricator. And once again, as usual, this had silver soldered unions on both ends. It's very important to silver solder piping where possible. Not only is it much stronger than soft soldering, it will withstand the heat. Soft soldering is okay for the condenser, but for live steam inputs it has to be silver solder because live steam at 50 pounds per square inch or above is hot enough to melt soft solder. And that's just about it for this series. All that remains to be done from my point of view is to just clad the steam piping with some string and paint it. And finally, I'll give the completed plant a good steam test in the garden, because as we all know, gardens are generally very good for plants. Thanks for watching this series, and I hope you found it useful.